Hello everyone, this is Kevin Moore bringing you a Nerd Adamas vidcast and this is where we talk about all things future, present, regarding fantasy. Um, so, you know, I was going to hold off with my first impression of Age of Sigma. I wanted to have a few games underneath my belt and just have a really good um, experience or, or comfortable experience so that I could really talk to it. Um, but after playing a, a few games here and there... Um, I realized that it didn't take me long to formulate an opinion and it didn't for take me long to get a handle of the game system. Um, and so with that said, I'm going to go forward and just give my first impressions um, of Age of Sigmar so far. Now, one thing I do want to say is <clears throat> I do have my opinions, both emotional and going forward. I want to make this more about just the game system itself. I plan to do a follow-on video um, that covers more as to what I see it due to the community where uh, and where I see our community as, as a whole. And that should be coming shortly after. So my overall impression is that the game is much, much easier to use. They've really simplified it. I don't think I've ever played a more basic game than this. Um, and so that actually has a lot of good and, and bad side. Um, I will say this from a personal experience trying to get my son into Warhammer Fantasy. It's been very difficult. Uh, I mean, you know, he started at 10, and I've always had to really simplify the rules because there was so much for him to swallow. Um, and, and it was very intimidating. And also getting uh, other other people to play, you know, it was it was always never just a first time sitting. It was always simplify the rules, get them to learn the basic mechanics, make an army list for them, make it real simple. And some people just, it was too much, and some people, you know, eventually caught on. And there's some people that get it right away. Um, but but there's a, there's a lot of nuances to Warhammer Fantasy Battle. There's a lot to... There's, it's very intimidating, as I said in the past. There's a lot to learn from, from the rules itself to then the army rules itself. Um, and then having to collect all those miniatures and, and paint them all at once. So there's, you know... There's a lot to learn in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. I understand why it was a dying system. There was nothing that would transition people into it. I think a Age of Sigmar would have done that. And I think it's 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 actually a perfect for that. So it's unfortunate that, that I was wrong and the Games Workshop decided to abandon Fantasy and just go with Age of Sigmar. I mean, for all you know, that's their long-term plan. But for now, they're focusing on this short-term scrimmage type game system. Or they might just stick with this for indefinitely. I don't know. Um, but I could see myself playing Age of Sigmar with my son now. Um, you know, when, when I see, or, or even with other people that are interested in the hobby, once I get a couple, you know, arm, you know, units or armies. And I say this because <clears throat> when I tried, you know, he, he's in college, I'm thinking, okay, now he's, he's old enough to really get it and I won't have to dumb it down. So we decided to go to a, a tournament together and there was a local tournament. It wasn't very difficult. Um, and so... You know, and he's quite busy, and so am I. So it it was hard for us to sit down in preparation for this tournament for me to really teach him how to play Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, and when we did, it was always a, a whole entire afternoon to play one game. And it was me having to write his army list, me having to write my army list, me having to sit down and explain all the phases and all the sub phases and all the nuances of movement. And even after two games, he still wasn't ready for it. So it came come. You know, I think we played two to three games. Come the tournament, you know, he's still learning. And I think it wasn't up until his fourth game that he finally started feeling comfortable. Yeah, but he's still, you know, at the end of the tournament, after his fifth game, he's still, um, you know, we played another game. And he and I could see that he's still learning. So so it's not, um, and, I, and I don't mean learning, like, how do you roll this? He understood the mechanics. I was referring to the movement and some of the nuances uh, as to you know, how to cast and the psychology of how casting. So there was a lot of subtleties in, in Warhammer that were there that we kind of all take for granted because we've play, been playing this game system for so long. And, and um, and you know, sometimes he, he, even after the turn, you know, the tournament, he's asked me to play, but we, we can't play because there's so much of a setup time. Whereas Age of Sigmar, there's no setup time. Um, I mean, you... You essentially grab the models that you want. There's no army list building. You just grab units and you put them together and you play. And it's a very simple game to start and play. And I'm talking about the setup time. 
if we wanted to play a game, and I was even very anxious to play with my son, he was just been busy. But all we have to do is spend maybe uh, a couple hours versus a whole entire evening to, to get in, prepare, prepared for this game, right? I remember like when I would play with my cousin, we would have to set up a time ahead of time so that he could start making his army list and I would have to make my army list. And then we would play and that would be an afternoon. Whereas here, you could literally show up with your models and say, okay, this is what we're gonna play and let's and, and bring them out and play. There's, there's a lot to be said for a game system like that. Uh, so I think Age of Sigmar does have its place. Um, does it fulfill the fantasy battle um, mass combat system? No, I think it fails and it falls very short of that. I think it would have been a, a great third, short, quick, um, scrimmage based game and it's very evident um when, when you know even though games workshop has made these army books for free that allows you to play your existing army in age of sigmar it's it's very evident that's not the design of the game system um it's very clunky i mean when we got there everybody you know when we got to the you know, to the game um our cam okay, omitted some parts here on Sunday, when I went to the league to, to play several games, I get to the tabletop and everybody's running their formations as if they were Warhammer. And sure enough, they're moving them just like Warhammer. They're all in blocks. Um, and it looks like it's a fantasy battle uh, game. And it feels like it until you get into combat. And once you're in combat, it's very evident that, that it's not a mass combat system. There's no advantages for rank and file. Um, and and then the advantage is in the movement and the, and the activation which is where the strategy of the game is and now you have to shift and move things around and if you have a large block of maybe 30 or 40 models it's very painful to have to move everything around as a matter of fact it's very disadvantageous for people with large blocks because now you can't get them into combat so you have a lot of people that are out of combat and having to wait um, you know the next round of activation before they could get into combat. And so this it's, it's this awkward shuffle that's happening throughout the whole entire mass combat phase. And obviously, the more you spread them out, the more you're gonna engage into somebody else. And next thing you know, there's not a lot of movement per se in the game. It's a lot of three inch movement to get everybody in combat. So I, I think that it's, you know, the way I see it is games workshop forward. What I suspect is gonna happen is you're gonna start seeing a lot of higher wound models um, with a lot higher leadership and the reason for that is you need a lot less uh, on the tabletop but you need to stick around they're also probably going to be ha ha having a higher leadership for the battle on um, the battle shock so that you don't lose these smaller base uh, because I see what I could see this game system transitioning more to larger models like monsters and heroes and um, and smaller troop types like five and then or five or ten and I think this game will work really good the minute you start getting to 20 or to 40 it starts getting very awkward and very um, unmanageable so here's some of the pros and cons to um, to the game system like I said it's less intimidating um, the, the the rule sets real easy it doesn't take you more than maybe one turn to two turn before you you got the rules the fact of the matter is the only reason why it was so hard for me to get the rule set is I kept on overcomplicating it. When it came to shooting, okay, uh, I'm looking for a line of sight. I'm looking for hard cover. I'm looking for soft cover. I'm wondering if I can shoot in combat. I'm wondering if I, if I can move and shoot. And the answer to that is no, you don't. There's no, there's nothing in the rule that says you need line, line of sight. But we did play it that way. But we didn't play with any other limitations. So we were able to shoot in con uh, combat. We were able to move and shoot. We were able to do everything. Um, and it's magic, real easy. You have three spells to pick, two with the core and one with whatever your your special character allows you to do. And that was it. And so, um, you know, the counter combat, there's no squirrels to pull out. No, it, essentially, if you have a wizard, you, you counter it, not, it goes off. But the spells help, but aren't dominating. And I, for me, that's a big plus. I've never liked the fact that Warhammer's, um, I, you know, I remember fifth edition, and even some parts of 6th and 8th, a spell won you the game. And I think that's just absolutely rid ridiculous. Um, Purple Sun hitting a certain vital unit, all of a sudden, the game's over. Uh, and, and I don't 
you know, with with irresistible force. All of a sudden, you know, okay, so the misca so the spell castle lost a wound and everybody around it maybe took a wound. But I just lost a whole entire unit. And and I I just never liked that aspect of the game. Um and so here you have magic still there, but not as dominating. And that's kind of what where I like it. That's kind of what I'm liking. That's not to say that it might not change in the future. Um, that's just to say that that's what the current state is there. Very easy to learn. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been able... I mean, I've learned... I read Magic on the spot and learned how to use it and was using it, no problem. Um, I, I like the combat system way, way better than Fantasy. I'll be honest with you on that part. I've never liked static combat res where you have only maybe five models, ten sometimes, doing all the action and you would have a, more than half right three quarters of your unit just sitting there and idle and twiddling the thumbs and so in eighth edition i liked it because now we had the second rack that could fight and the, you had four formations which was, made it a little bit better but still you had a lot of models that had nothing to do with the game except for uh, giving you that extra combat res so in this particular aspect i like the fact that everything could sh could fight i i actually really like the range of the weapons for to, to me you weapons should do one of two things it should either improve your initiative or give you range and so um, with initiative being dropped they've given weapon range and I really like that I really like the combat system in Age of Sigmar over Warhammer Fantasy Battle uh, I, I think it's interesting the way they change the, the turn charges I, I like that I like that mechanic I could tell you though that the first turn is probably going to be the more important part, but it wasn't as important, right? Once you got that first turn, as a dwarf player, I could tell you that was so so important. Um, getting that first turn, get, so that I guarantee those two rounds of shooting and possibly a third to soften up my army. Now, <clears throat> now it's there's no guarantee. Y your opponent could could you know ha lose that round. And get back to back, you know, and then the next turn get the first round, get back to back first turns, and that's going to be huge for them, because uh, because especially when you're in combat, which unit you activate. So um, I think it's great. I really like that part of the game. Uh, so for now, you know, on paper it looks like everything's on 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 par, right? Uh, so the, so now I'm taking units that I've never taken before, and I, I kind of find that exciting. I've, I've never liked the fact that when I would read you know 8th edition I'd be like oh, this unit's absolutely useless now right every single version was a power shift um, meaning that one at one version uh, the gyro was, was useless and not worth taking you never saw it and the next thing you know people were taking it same thing with kind of like um, um, my, since I played dwarves I can only really think of dwarves sometimes you would have cavalry right everybody was taking cavalry in 6th and 7th and 8th edition comes around and you don't see cavalry that much anymore it's more people want to want to feel it for a reason as opposed to it being the, the better choice, right? And so now you have the option to pick almost any unit, and there's a reason for that. Now, after after I played, I can tell you that that's not as, on paper, that's not as uh, nice as it as I thought. Uh, after playing Bretonia, I can tell you right now, I will be taking Questing Knights over every other unit simply because they become the best choice. Um, you know, unless you know, the other the other units give some other bonuses, but um, I, I found that the questing knights, in general, did a lot better, and that's what we're going to happen. That's what we're going to start seeing. Um, so, but but the fact of the matter is, you could take anybody still and and do decent. In in the past, you couldn't take other units because they just couldn't compete against the meta that was out there. But the fact that everybody's now hitting almost on fours and wounding on fours, there's a few variations. It it means that everybody has the option or the ability to 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 fight. I, I mean, for the for once, um, men at arms are worthwhile taking for once. Um, and so I think that's pretty neat. Um, so what's the cons? It as I stated, it's just less sophisticated. Um, there's not a lot of strategy out there and so it leaves you for wanting I, I've always felt like I've always felt movement has always been the most important part of fantasy battle uh, some you know there's other things that could win you the game um, like magic or, or shooting but if if 
if those two like you don't get those lucky rolls or 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 you don't take those those domineering spells or war machines it always came down to movement and making sure that you shaft up your opponent or if you you know put yourself in a position where you're going to win the battle based on you know flank charges and and um you know combining certain troop types and so that element is gone uh, there's no more tinkering and, and optimizing a hero and, and trying to find some odd combination. It's that's all gone. Um, it's you know there's still a way like in Age of Sigmar still allows synergy, meaning that certain heroes supplement other troop types. Um, and you see that a lot as far as like um, my enchantress only gave wound bonuses to peasants. And uh, Paladins also gave bonuses to Yale men. So you do see some type of synergy. Um, and so there's going to be some level of tweaking. I think we just don't see that yet. Um, so, but you don't get the fine, this is the type of hero I want to take. And that's kind of gone. Um, it's new rules. There's a okay, so I say there's a lot to learn. Because you have to unlearn everything and relearn a new rule set. And it's probably the easiest rule set out there, but there's still a lot to learn. Um, and on top of that, well, if you're learning a new rule set, why Warhammer? Why not look at everybody else that's out there? Let's look at Avatars of War. Let's look at Kings of War. Um, let's look at Ages uh, War Gods, right? Which has, um, I think, by Chris Franz Patek. Who has is a very great sculptor and has a very nice miniature line. There's also, um, I th you know, I forget their names. They, I think it was, used to be Bane, and I don't know what they are now. Very nice models, um, and they're developing a game system. There's also Malufax. There's also, um, you know, War Machine. So there's a lot of new games now that, or Dark Ages. Why, why pick? Uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. If we're learning something new, why pick them over anybody else, right? And and so now is a good opportunity to say, hey, you know, to look at these other game systems. No guidance. I really don't think that Warhammer, uh, that the Games Workshop is going to be supporting Warhammer as it did. Um, I don't. I, they're obviously made a stance that it's not a competitive game. They want a quick game that you could pick up, kind of like Monopoly. You you pull it out, you play. And, and then you, you close it up and that's it. And I don't think they want this tournament scene anymore. Um, you know, I kind of stated it's not cohesive. Um, you know, and I'm not the first person to say that. I, I, when I played, almost everybody across the board said, this doesn't feel like a mass combat system. It feels like a scrimmage-based game and it doesn't really flow well. It's very awkward to move units around. And I've heard many YouTubers say the same exact thing. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know where G Games Workshop is going with this. I suspect that they're going with a smaller scale system. Um, and the future is great. Like I said, I don't know where they're going. I, they, they used to communicate with their consumer very well, and you knew what Games Workshop was going, what direction they were taking the hobby. And now, there's no communication. Mum's the word. You get what you get, and be happy. And I, I, I don't know, I'm not liking, you know, and I know they've been like this for some time now, but our community has been strong, so we've kind of dictated with the lack of game, Games Workshop's absence. But I feel now with so much change going on, and they're still silent, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like they're really caring too much about their customer. So as far as what's my final verdict of Age of Sigmar, um, it, it is a playable game, I think. Am I on board with it? I don't know. I'm 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 undecisive. Um, their stopgap solution of make of porting over these army books uh, works, kind of right. Yeah, at least you could play the game with the new game system. Uh, I suspect that. I, I mean, but I don't know where they're going. I don't know if eventually they're just going to sell all their existing inventory until they're out of stock. And then and then move on to these new models, and so I I don't know if I'm playing a dead system, right? I don't know. I obviously Age of Sigmar will continue, but will it be a fantasy based system or is it going to be to this type of steampunk 
that's that's prevalent right now in the industry and is that the, the way they're going because I can tell you right now even though I, I think their models are beautiful I don't like them I, I don't want that um, if I did I'd be all for it I'd be playing 40k I'd be playing War Machine but I chose I chose Games Workshop I chose Warhammer Fantasy Battle because they make the best fantasy line mass combat system and Games Workshop from their actions is saying they're not going in that direction anymore they obviously haven't communicated to the consumer so i don't know what direction they're going um but now as far as me staying with eighth edition i'm not interested in, in staying with the dead system i don't want to keep on playing eighth edition if i'm going to continue playing a fantasy battle system i'm either going to embrace age of sigma or i'm going to move over to a different combat system uh, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So it, it really is Games Workshop moving and, and see where they're taking that hobby and seeing who steps up. I mean, if um, the, right now there's this huge void and this perfect opportunity for these companies to step up and, and produce a, a line. You know, there's a few people that are in the right spot but haven't historically done a good job. Let's find out if they can really step up their game. Anyhow, this is Kelmore signing out. Thank you for listening.